Hey guys, so today we are going to be talking about a little something called essential oils, which you can see these little bottles I have here. And a lot of you have probably heard talk about essential oils. You may even be starting to use them or you may be super interested in them. But what I wanna share with you today is some safety things that you may not know about essential oils that is really, really important. So if you are planning on wanting to get started with using essential oils, maybe you already are using essential oils or you know people who are gonna be using them, this is really important information that I wish I had had when I first started out with essential oils that everybody needs to be made aware of. So that's what we're gonna be diving in today. I wanna to welcome you, good morning. I'm Melissa K. Norris. I'm the author of The Made From Scratch Life, the host of the Pioneering Today podcast. So one of the things that I wanna talk about with essential oils is there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of bad information, and there's a lot of huge misconceptions when it comes to using essential oils out there. So I want to share a little bit of my story. Now, I am a natural living mama. I love things that aren't processed, that we don't have to, you know, go and have a huge list of side effects. And I love being able to use herbs and natural remedies to treat my family and in my home. However, y'all, if you have been with me for any amount of time, you know that I'm going to tell you just because something is natural does not make it safe. And it's a really big misconception. So essential oils are awesome and they are natural, but they have to be used with some caution and you kind of have to understand some things. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. A lot of times you'll hear like people will say, oh, essential oils, like they're just like a miracle in a bottle. Well, for some people, some essential oils have been like a miracle in a body, but bottle, excuse me, and in the body too, when they're using them. But that's not a blanket statement, and that's where we get into trouble when we make blanket statements, right? I do need to give you a heads up. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a professional medical person. I'm not a certified aromatherapist or naturopath or anything like that. I'm just a homesteading girl who's sharing her story with you guys in the hopes that it will help you, and I wish I had had this information sooner. So what is an essential oil, okay? So an essential oil is a natural oil. It's extracted from plants, from plant matter or the roots. It can be dependent upon the specific plant that we're getting the essential oil from. But you're drying out the oil from it either by distilling, by distilling it. And you can either have two methods that it's going to be distilled by either by steam or water. And it's a very, very concentrated form of that plant matter, the essence of it, the oils of it, right? So it's much stronger and much concentrated than using an herb or just the plant itself. So, which can be great because we've got a whole lot of power packed into a little bottle for storage purposes, or it can be plants that you can't get in your area and you've got it in this easy form here of the essential oil. But I wanna share with you today first why I initially stopped using essential oils. And you probably didn't see that coming, but I really wanna share this and then the steps that I took back to actually using essential oils again, because I feel like many of you are probably like I was when I first decided to stop using essential oils. So when I first heard about essential oils, I was super, super excited about them. I already had, by turning to natural forms of medicine and kicking processed stuff, out of my kitchen and our home, I was able to heal where modern medicine had failed me, prescriptions and all of that. I was able to heal my stomach acids and ulcers and erosion to my esophagus. And so I was super excited to begin learning more and more about natural forms of medicine and holistic ways to take care of things. And so essential oils was like, I was so on board, you guys. I was so excited to find out about them. I didn't grow up in a home that used essential oils, and I was just jumped in like both feet, let's do this. So I signed up with an MLM company, which is known as a multi-level marketing company, because I could get a really good deal on a, on a beginning starter kit. And I was really excited about them, and I couldn't wait to start using them, and I just wanted to share it with everybody. So I was really excited. So I signed up with them and right away I started going off of what it said on the bottle, how to use it, and then I had other people who had been with the company for a long time and had been using essential oils for years and they were sharing with me the way that they use the oils and I was just really, really excited about this. So one of the things that they said to do, and I wanna make this really clear too, I am not bashing MLM companies 
okay i'm not bashing their oils they can have some great oils and there are some great people who are with those multi-level marketing companies that share very sound and safe advice okay so i i just want to get that out there this is not meant to be a bash towards any of those companies. I have some great friends who are awesome people within those companies and they share very safe advice, but that's not the case with all of them. And so I wanna make sure that we've got that distinction here and share with you. So one of the things that they said to do, what a way to get to using the oils on a, you know, a daily basis and getting them in your system was to use the oil in water. So specifically it was to take, this is a citrus burst or a um, like a lemon oil, for example, was one of them. And to put a drop or two, and I am not recommending this, so let me make that real quick, quick right here. I'm not recommending this, but it was to put a drop in your water. But it was to make sure that the water was in glass and even to be careful if you were doing it in stainless steel. Now we're talking about like one drop for a whole thing of water and to do it once or twice a day. Well, I did that and I made sure that I only used glass because lemon is super acidic, right? Especially in this concentrated form. That's why you weren't even supposed to do it in a stainless steel bottle because it could pit it, definitely not plastic. So that should have been my first clue, but if it's that strong, what is it doing to the soft tissues in our throat where we're drinking it, our esophagus and our stomach lining, right? I mean, if it's that strong that we need to only have it be in glass. And oil, which this is an essential oil, and water do not mix. So if you were to do this, if you were to put a drop on this on top of the water, you would see a film that would form over the top of the water. It's not dispersing within the water, okay? So that was one thing that I tried and did. And then the other thing was, is I've got peppermint oil here. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love myself a peppermint mocha. Let me tell you, peppermint hot chocolate, like love all of that. So that was another thing is to put a drop in your hot chocolate or your cup of coffee if you wanted to have, you know, like a little bit of mint. So I tried that. Oh, my lanta. I had the worst heartburn and burning in my throat and in my gut for 24 hours after doing that. And it was just one drop. I was very careful to measure just one drop. Well, now I know a lot of things. One, that you, we, I do not take essential oils internally. They are very concentrated. Your body does not need on a daily basis that much lemon, that much peppermint, and especially not in a liquid because it cannot disperse that way. Um, so anyhow, but another thing too is with peppermint, it can be a flavoring. Now in food, it's a little bit different. A lot of times you'll see in recipes where there's fat and a lot of other things that they will use a drop of food grade essential oils to flavor, say like fudge or candy or something like that. That's different, but just dropping it in liquid like that is really, really a bad idea. For one, there's been tish, there's reported actually documented damage of tissue damage to the esophagus and stomach lining. You can also have damage to liver and kidneys when you are doing it in that form. And it doesn't always show up right away. You can also have toxicity levels that will build up. So, but peppermint, if you have heartburn or you know, stomach acid and GERD and that kind of thing. Peppermint is often known as a herb that will help soothe the stomach, right? If you've got digestion and that type of thing, but it also will relax one of the muscles. And when that happens, it actually allows acid to come back up. And so I think it was two things that caused my really bad heartburn when doing that. So I decided right away after those two experiences that I was not gonna be doing that. I experienced burning and just different sensations. So that was kind of my first thing, like, hmm, I'm gonna pull back a little bit from this. The other thing that you will often see on oils too that I wanna make sure that we go is you will see therapeutic grade listed on lots of oils. Now, therapeutic grade is not like a certification that's governed in any way, shape, or form. So it doesn't mean that the oils are bad if they have therapeutic grade on them. It doesn't mean that it's just a marketing ploy, but it doesn't really 
mean anything either. It doesn't give you any type of certification for it. So when I'm looking at an essential oil to use, what I want is third party lab testing. I want to know that those are because a lot of essential oils, like if you just go to the store and grab essential oils off of the store shelf, they can be adultered with things. They can be cut with things and they're not necessarily pure. So no matter where I get my essential oils from, I want to make sure that it's been third party tested by a third party lab and that I can have access to those reports and see those. One of the big things that really, really, I, why I stopped using essential oils was my daughter has von Willebrand's disease. So what that is, is the blood clotting disorder. Her blood does not clot. Um, she is missing some proteins in her blood actually. So she has clotting factor issues. It's not hemophilia. It's a little bit similar to that, but it, Anyhow, so I can't give her, when she comes down with things or is ill or has problems, I am very, very, very limited in the things that I can give her, even in over-the-counter medication. So if she has a fever, you know, or she gets injured, there's very little that I can give her because so many things interact with our blood that we have over the counter for like um, NSAIDs and anti-inflammatories and even fever re fever reducers. So I'm very limited to what I can give her. So I was really excited to start researching herbs and natural remedies in the hopes that I would find some things that I could use with her that would be safe for her when she does have, you know, issues, health issues and things like that come up. So I was in a, a group that was filled with people who were, um, who were sharing essential oils and about them. And someone posted a picture that you could then share, of course, you know, like we all see on Facebook and social media that we see the pictures of things and then you share it if you like it or think it's good information, right? So it was a photo and it was of ginger essential oil. And on the photo of the bottle of ginger essential oil, it said on there, if you have are on warfarin, which is a blood clotting medication, that thins the blood, or if you have a blood clotting issue to use this oil. And that is so, so dangerous. I was immediately, I jumped on there and I said, please take this down. This is so dangerous. If you are on warfarin or blood thinning medications, if you add anything else to it, I mean, you even have to be careful with how much vitamin K you get. Those levels have to be checked all the time. Like this is really super dangerous to put out there. Like somebody could literally die if they were to use a whole bunch of ginger and they're on blood thinning medications or they have a blood clotting disorder like my daughter, like I can't even give her candied ginger, right? So that um, was not heated. <laughs> that had, um, nobody took that warning seriously and I got um, a lot of responses back that um, they were just vague that, it, that, you could, that the oil would work um, however the body needed it to, which is so false. And so after that, knowing, like I said, that my daughter has this serious blood clotting condition and that when actual, you know, tr like this is super dangerous as given and it's not heated, I just couldn't in good conscience, I could not stay. Um, and it wasn't the company that was putting that out. Let me be this, I wanna be very clear about this. It wasn't the company, it was people who were um, sharing about it that were with the company, but knowing that when they were given documentation that this is really super dangerous, please do not share and give this advice. And they just didn't want to listen to that. Then I couldn't be with that. And I couldn't refer people, people to that, that this was be, being given out like in good conscience. And so I decided that at that time I did not have enough knowledge about essential oils and that I was going to stop using them until I had a lot more knowledge and that my knowledge needed to come from places that were with studies and that had research done and with science now and i will tell you i'm not a huge fan of the fda okay so i think that big pharma definitely has a lot of flaws with it but there is still some good info out there so I'm just gonna give that with a grain of salt. So I wanted to make sure that I had research coming from multiple different spots before I started using essential oils again. And so that's what I did. I didn't use them for probably about six months and I started to do research and I still do not consider myself an expert. Like there is so much to learn about all of this, which is really exciting on one hand. Um, and so what I did for me personally, um, what I decided is I first started looking up all of the oils that were not safe for kids because 
I didn't know that some oils couldn't be used on children, specifically um, peppermint and eucalyptus. You shouldn't use on really young children. It can actually interact with their breathing. And a lot of times we're using those when you are really congested or you have a cold, people will turn to those. They have menthol in them, right? And so you'll turn to those, but they can cause respiratory distress, especially in really little children. So those are oils that are not considered to be kid safe. And I didn't know that. And I had used them on my, you know, my kids when they were little. And then when I found that out, I'm like, oh my goodness. And praise the Lord that nothing happened to them. But I decided I really needed to look at that first, like which oils are safe for kids and which ones aren't and what makes them that way. So one of the things that um, I have for you guys is a free essential oil safety guide and chart. And I'm really excited about this chart. You can get it at the um, blog post. It's a free download. Um, it's about four pages, but it breaks it down alphabetically, the essential oil by alphabetically, and then it has listed ages. So some oils are safe to use on all ages. Some oils are safe to use on, you know, if a, a two years and above, or some of them are 10 years and above. So it breaks that down so you can quickly look at that. Then it also has a, is it a photosensitive oil. A lot of you have probably seen floating around really recently that there was a lady who used um, some, I believe it was lemon essential oil, and she got severe burns. We're talking blisters and stuff because she didn't realize, and most of them will say that they are photosensitive and really fine print on the bottle, but she didn't see that part or she didn't read that part. So. If you have citrus oils, many of them are photosensitive oils. And so what that means is if you put them on and then you go outside in the sun, you can get really severe burns. And so it's really important to know so that you're not using those oils topically, or if you are, that you're then not going outside or in a tanning bed or something like that. So we've got a column like that in the chart too that lists if they're photosensitive or not. And then we have cautions because there are some medical condition interactions, like I mentioned with the ginger, if you have blood clotting issues, there's some interactions with different essential oils if you have epilepsy, if you're on medications for epilepsy. So it's really important to know these, right? So we've got cautions listed in the chart, um, drug interactions if you're on a typical type of medication, and then special notes, like some essential oils, um, are you're gonna get a lot more benefit out of them if they're stored in the fridge and they're gonna last longer. So I've got a chart done up for you. I think it's about four pages worth as I click through here real quick. And you can get that totally for free and it's on the blog post, so totally free. I really, really hope that you will grab that and that you will print that out and have that for your reference. I wish that I had had that chart um, way back when, when I first got started. So it's a great reference sheet to have, totally free. Um, and then one of the ways that I use essential oils now, but I still wanna talk about a little bit, is using essential oils topically. So I don't use essential oils internally. It's totally your call. Some of you are gonna disagree with me on that. And that's totally fine. Personally, I don't use them internally unless it was with my naturopath or a certified you know, herbalist aromatherapist for a specific treatment. That would be a different story, but I'm just saying me just using them myself. I choose not to go that route. So topically, I use essential oils almost daily on a topical level. But again, knowing which ones have photosensitive issues and which ones are safe for the skin, because not all of them we would want to use on our skin, right? So like cinnamon, that one, if you were to just use it directly, can be very hot and can cause burning. So we always want to make sure that it's a suitable one for the skin, because not all of them are. And the other thing is I don't ever use essential oils neat. So if you're new to the essential oil terms and terminology, what that means is just taking an oil and putting it directly on your skin without diluting it. That's what neat means. So we take because it's an oil, right? An oil needs to disperse in oil, not oil and water. You take something, we call them carrier oils. I usually use either jojoba oil or olive oil and you will dilute so much oil with so much of the essential oil, and some of them have different dilution rates, like some of them you need to dilute more than others, and then you will put it on your skin instead of applying it neat. So that, that's what I mean by that. And there's a couple reasons for this. So I've heard some, um, what I would call misinformation, and that's saying that if you used an oil neat and you had a reaction to it, it just means that the essential oil is not pure or it wasn't a good grade of oil. And that's false. 
if you have a reaction to an oil, a lot of times people will use oils neat multiple times and they will actually build up a sensitivity in their skin. But there's two reasons that we don't use an oil neat. And this is um, all in the blog post too if you wanna go back and reference that. But one, you run the risk of having skin reactions, right? So you can have, you know, it can become irritated. You could break out in a rash. Um, if it was a burning one, you could possibly get blisters, that type of thing. And the second reason, and probably the more important reason, is using an oil neat can lead to systemic toxicity. Uh, and that doesn't always show up immediately. So you could use an oil neat and then it can have, symptoms can appear later. And that is sourced from Robert Tisserand, who is a renowned worldwide essential oils safety expert. Um, and that is from him. And so that's like I said, I really like to check with experts and do lots of resource. So um, I always make sure, and then when you're diluting an oil, so there's some, there's actually, what I love about plant therapy, which plant therapy is actually a sponsor for today's show, um, I did an order with them and I loved it so much and I was so excited about the way that they had their oils done that I contacted them and asked them if they would give us a coupon for the Pioneering Today listeners and my readers at the website and they said yes. So they shipped me out um, this starter set and then this free oil, which I'm gonna tell you guys about how you can get. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why I really, this is the company that I'm using now and why. What I love is they have on their bottles, one, they have them clearly listed if they are kids safe or not. And this kids safe was done, all of them were formulated by Robert Tisserand. They brought in a third party expert to formulate them so that they were safe for children. So I love it that just a glance, I know that this is a kids safe oil, even if I don't have my handy dandy free chart that you guys should be grabbing. I can tell by looking at theirs, this one's kids safe, this one doesn't have kids safe, it's not kids safe. So I love that that safety feature is just immediately built in. The other thing that I really like is they actually give the percentage to dilute the oil right on the bottle. So for this one, it's dilute to two to 3% for topical use for peppermint. And one thing with the peppermint, you always, we should dilute our oils no matter what, but you really wanna dilute it because if you don't dilute it enough, it burns. And if that happens, don't put water on it. That will make it burn more. Always dilute it with more oil. One of the really cool things though is because if you're like me, you're like, okay, that's great, but what is two to 3% diluted? Like, how do I figure that out? What does that mean? So they also have, which is really cool. Let me see if I can get there without un knocking everything over is they have this magnet, which you can get the magnet for 99 cents or you can print it out for free. So totally up to you. But they've got this magnet here. I, the glare might be a little bit much from my light with the camera, but the magnet is really cool because it shows you all of the different dilution rates. So it shows you to do 0.5% dilution is three drops of your essential oil with four teaspoons of your carrier oil. So 2% would be six drops of essential oil with two teaspoons carrier oil. And if you only wanted to do one teaspoon worth, then you would drop that down. You know, you would fraction, fraction do your math down there. So it'd be three drops of essential oil to one teaspoon carrier oil. And that would be your 2% dilution. It's got some different conversions and dilution guidelines here, which is really cool. So it tells you that 0.25% through 0.5% should be used for children under the age of two. And of course, only a kid safe oil at that point. Um, and then 1% for long-term or daily use, 5% for short-term. And it, it just goes over and it's just got it all listed there for you, which is really awesome. So I just keep this on my fridge so that I can quickly look when I need to use something and make something up. And like I said, you can print it out for free or you can grab it for 99 cents and it'll just get shipped to you and then you've got it there to slap on the fridge. So that was really important to me is knowing those proper dilution rates as well. So topically wise, I love frankincense oil. So frankincense is one that I use pretty much every day and I've got a bottle of pure jojoba oil that I will use as a moisturizer on my face at night and I will mix a drop of frankincense with the jojoba oil and I'll mix that all up and then I use that on my face, especially around, you know, cause our skin around our eyes gets really delicate. Or if you're starting, if you've enjoyed the sun way too much and spent a lot of time outdoors and you start to get those sunspots, that's where I like to use mine. So that I use pretty much every single day um, is one of the ways with, and frankincense oil is one of my favorites. Now in homemade products, 
I use it for all types of things when I'm doing homemade products with essential oils. So I've got, actually, I'll go and grab the jar and show you right now. It's right here. I have right here, I'll put my mic back on. Um, this is a whipped body cream and I like to use peppermint with that. It's really good for dry skin and it smells amazing. It's got cocoa butter in it. In fact, this is a new recipe that's gonna be in my new book that's coming out in October, but you guys are getting a sneak peek there. So peppermint is one that I use a lot. I like to use peppermint in lip balms. I think it feels amazing and kind of tingly on the lips as long as you don't use too much, right? So that's one that I use a lot. I use it in all my soaps. I use it in all the different soaps that I make. Um, and then, of course, when you're making bath salts. And then I also like to use it in my cleaning products. So the citrus oils are excellent to use in cleaning products. They really cut through grease. And if you ever have, you know, like I like to reuse glass bottles. And so if they've had like a label on them or you've got something really sticky on the outside of the glass bottles and I'm trying to clean them up, if you just put a little bit of the lemon oil on that sticky residue, boom, it's like gone. But I will tell you, don't ever put the straight lemon oil. I will use it on glass like that if I'm trying to remove something. But because it is so strong, you wouldn't want to use it like on plastic or you wouldn't want to use it on like granite or marble, anything like that, that it would eat through essentially. So you, you're going to want to be careful. But and then in baking soda, I'll put it in baking soda and then sprinkle that as a carpet freshener. Lavender works really well that way too. So I use it for a lot of different things. So I use them that way, kind of all throughout the house, beauty routines, topically cleaning, and then in all of my, um, you know, what would you classify soap? It can kind of be beauty, but even just washing wise as well. And then my other favorite one that I use it a lot too is diffusing or aromatherapy. So this is using the scent of an essential oil to help your body both physically and emotionally is kind of the definition of using of aromatherapy, right? And it's usually in the form of either stimulating or calming, depending upon what you want to do. So for example, at bedtime, I will take a drop of lavender oil and I just drop a little drop right on my pillowcase because lavender um, can be very calming, right? It's a great one to have at bedtime. It smells awesome. And usually that one drop will last for about two days. So I don't even put it on necessarily every night, but it's just a really easy way. And then that way I'm not using electricity to run a diffuser all the way through the night or have the just that noise unless you like they're really very quiet but I like to do that route instead then another way that I like to use and to like since I love my house to smell good right so I used to be kind of a candle junkie until I realized that most candles use synthetic fragrances and when you're burning they can put carcinogenics into the air they can really bother people with respiratory asthma allergies kind of all that stuff so I stopped using those unless they were a homemade candle that I made with like beeswax but I want my house to still smell good and I wasn't quite ready to give up my scents. So using a diffuser, which this is a, dif a diffuser right here and I will plug it in for you. And so I will use this. One of my favorites to use is a, um, the lemon, especially in the summertime because it just smells so good in the house. But you can put it on a mist and it will start to mist. I don't know if it'll pick it up there. I think you can see it there a little bit. And so you put a, some drops of, with water of the essential oil inside here, and then it will diffuse it up into the air. And then this one actually has lights. I don't know if the lights are gonna show up here with the camera. Um, it's, but anyways, you can go through lights and you can leave the lights on or you can leave them off. You don't have to have that part. But this is great if you just want your house to smell good, kind of take the place of a candle. But it can also be used, so if you've got a cold, for example, my son had a really bad cold, it was super congested. And so we put some peppermint and eucalyptus because he is now 12 years old. So we wanna put that out there. Even diffusing wise, you, I would not use eucalyptus diffusing wise around in a really small area if you had really young children or someone who was um, had epilepsy or was on um, medication for epilepsy because eucalyptus has been shown um, that it can kind of trigger people that have that type of thing. So even with diffusing, we still want to use some caution there, right? Um, but this one I used, and so that just really helps kind of clear everything up. And peppermint smells really good too, and it can also be what we call like a stimulating one. So if you're kind of feeling tired and that type of thing, then you would go for the more stimulating ones versus the calming ones. So that's one of my other favorite ways to use it too. Then I really like to use 
a roll-on bottle. So this just means that it's been, I have diluted it down ahead of time and it's just ready to go. So if you're traveling, it's super helpful. And we recently had in our home, we were visited by bugs that go in the hair. Okay, enough said, right? We all just shuddered and you'll probably all be itching your head all day long. <laughs> just the thought of those. But we caught it early and so only one person had them. And so I was able to use Melaleuca or tea tree oil. Melaleuca is also tea tree oil. And I made a roll-on bottle so that we could every morning and night, we could just roll a little bit on the nape of our neck and above your ear, because that's kind of where those things like to hang out. And nobody, it didn't transfer to anybody else in the family, which was fabulous. And it was also great because on my bottle of Melaleuca, it tells me the proper dilution rate. And I could use this chart because we're just doing it for short-term use to make sure that I had that diluted down to the proper dilution for everybody in the family, including the kids. So this came in super handy for that. So I really like to have these little roll-on bottles for traveling if you're not home and they're already done for you. One of the other cool things um, I, that I really like about and why I'm using plant therapy now, I told you guys a little bit about it, is they do have the kid safe like i said they've got different formulas for kid safe so this is an immune boosting one this is the sniffle stopper and they've also got them in roll-on forms and you can get them in a kit like pre-done so if you have grandkids or kids that's fabulous i plan on ordering more i got the first two in the kid safe one already on my first order so i think that that is amazing and then one of the other things that i like is they do carry organic varieties um, they're certified organic and most of the oils so you can get that too But the really cool thing is when you look on like when you go and it says essential oil and you're picking out the different essential oils that you want There's a little button there and it says lab report and you click on it right there And it shows you the third-party testing and the lab stuff, which I think is really amazing and I was really excited plus all of their staff, so if you, you know, you can email a company or they have the little chat box that pops up. They're all certified aromatherapists, so they're all actually trained people with essential oils that may be answering, that will be answering your questions and works within their customer service. So I think that is pretty amazing. Um, and I what really, that's why I'm endorsing them now. Um, as, and they didn't even approach me. Like I found them and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is what I've been looking for in an essential oil company. And I was super excited about it. So if you want to get the free bottle of the Citrus Burst, which is one of my favorites, um, you can get this little, this starter kit. It's super cool. This is actually wood. So it comes in this little wooden um, it's the starter set. It's the lemon, lavender, and peppermint essential oil. So it comes like this in this little box set. So super cute for gift giving or just to keep them together. So you've got that. And then you can get this bottle of the Citrus Burst for free. So um, the you can go to melissacanoris.com slash plant therapy, and that will take you there. That's the affiliate to the website to plant therapy. And then you use the coupon code, which expires June 15th, right? So we've got basically two weeks to use that. And the coupon code is Melissa K. Norris. So all one word there. And so put both items in your cart. So you'd put this is under the essential oil sets, the beginner set, you'd put that in there and then put the citrus burst in there. And then when you pop the coupon in, it takes off the $7.95, which is how much this bottle is. So you're getting a bottle, an $8 oil bottle for free. And then it'll take that off. And then you can add this in if you want. It's 99 cents for the magnet if you want to have that or you can download it and print it out for free. So either either way, this is a really good resource to have on hand. Um, so those are my favorites from them. And then another one, if you just wanna add it on, this is a vanilla blend that they have. It's with vanilla and ylang ylang. And it is my favorite new oil that I use for perfume. So that's another way that you can use essential oils. I have, I didn't actually get it on yet this morning, but I've got a, there's diffuser bracelets, there's diffuser necklaces. And so I love to put a couple drops on this. It smells so good. I wish you could actually smell it. I know we can't do that through, through the camera yet, right? And a couple of my other favorite scents too, in both the diffuser and if you're using them um, kind of as perfume, like in the roll-ons or on, in a diffuser jewelry type thing, I really love, and I would have never picked this out on my own. I was actually in a, um, a little store that had homemade soaps, and this was one of the scents on the homemade soaps, and it was so awesome. And it was lavender with lime. And that lavender and lime together was just phenomenal. So 
if you're looking for some fun scents that smell really good, that was one of my favorites. I loved that together. And I, I use a lot of the citrus blends, especially in the summertime when I'm using, you know, diffusing wise to make my house smell good and then also in cleaning products. So the citrus burst is fun. I like straight lemon too, but I like this citrus boost. It has um, grapefruit, lemon, lime, mei ching, mandarin, and sweet orange. So that one I really like. So that, guys, is pretty much everything that I had. Remember to go and grab that free essential oil safety chart that I was telling you. It's four pages, alphabetical listing. It has a lot, a lot of really awesome info in there on when it's safe to use for what ages, if there's contraindications, medicals, if it's photosensitive or not, and if it has any special storage requirements. So that's totally free, and you can get that. Um, it's on... Um, the blog post as well as check out plant therapy and the deal to get the citrus burst for free. Um, all of that information with the coupon code is there available for you too. And then if you wanted to check out um, this diffuser, there's a link for there as well. This one's actually from Amazon. So guys, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you back here next Thursday morning. I hope you enjoyed that and I want to extend a special invitation to invite you to grab your free copy of my ultimate home food preservation guide. You can go to melissaknorris.com slash preservation guide and I got the link for you. And it shows you six different ways to preserve food at home, over 135 resources. It'll help you pick the right equipment, which is best for you and where you're at right now. Root cellaring techniques, how to use oil and alcohol to preserve food at home. And of course, one of my favorites involves canning. We'll be talking about water bath and pressure canning, how to save safe with both of those recipes, tutorials, and it's all waiting for you to begin preserving your food at home to build your self-sufficiency, save a ton of money, and be healthy by knowing exactly what is in your food. So what are you waiting for? Go grab your free copy right now.